Hello everybody and welcome to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels. In today's episode we're going to be looking at some truly classic Americana. This is a Chrysler CM6 from 1931 and is it not just absolutely gorgeous? I, I am so in love with this, the shape of it, these beautiful flowing fenders, the side plate, the white wall tyres, the yellow wheels and the, the fact the wire wheels, it's just stunning, that front bumper, these oversized massive headlights, the chrome radiator grille and then the blue and that, it's just absolutely mind tinglingly, lack of words, stunning. I do not have the words to describe how much I love this car. I want one of these so badly. I, I want this in like my living room, a, a big living room, mind you, but just there so I can come in in the morning and just sit at it and go, yes, that's very pleasant. Now, things to take from this is it is a stunning shade of blue. And sadly, this isn't an original. The actual color can be seen just in the inside of the doors. It's a much darker navy tone, which still would be pretty nice, but I'm actually, a fan of this despite the fact it's non-authentic. Now good things about this, it's a four door, we have the front door here, a rear door, lot of storage space for stuff. There is no boot or trunk in America so all your storage space is the rear seat. Plenty of legroom in there though which is nice. Walking around we have the beautiful rear tyre carried on the back just which is perfect, uh, just that's what a vintage car should look like. Gas tank is at the back as well and then nice little plate and nice rear light. It is absolutely magnificent. The only thing which kind of detracts slightly from the whole quality of the car is this, the roof, which is, uh, I think, felt. And is really showing, yeah, showing its age quite a bit. Little bits across the top here, less than perfect. On the hand, other hand, this isn't actually a show car. This is a car that is used in not daily life, but semi daily life. I went out with the owner to go get some spare parts for one of his other cars. And he was like, should we take this? And I'm like, oh yes. This tiny little badge saying Chrysler is the only place on the entire car that carries the maker's name. The rest of the car is totally bare. Unlike today where you have the name stamped over everything. Such a tiny little mark, which is really quite fascinating. And really nice, it's so nice, it's just a little stamp, rather than every, I just, I like that. I also love the radiator cover with these wings. If that's uh, the cap for the radiator is below that. It's, it's just, it's beautiful, isn't it? And at the bottom, we just have the six for the CM6. This is a phenomenal piece of design. I love old cars that have side opening on it like this. That's cool. Now the most important and noteworthy thing about this car is this engine has never been rebuilt. It's in an original engine. It's been maintained and serviced but it's never been stripped down and rebuilt. It's an original engine and an original transmission as well. And that is bonkers. This car's from 1931. And it's still going. They built things well back in the day didn't they? they don't build them like they used to. This little unit here is a six cylinder, flat top, and it's 218 cubic inches, generating a mighty 68 horsepower, which is slightly more than my Peugeot 106. And it's got two extra cylinders, so I don't actually know what they do. I really like some of the work that's been done to it. For instance, there's a piece of wood in here, which is used to hold the alternator back and keep the alternator tight. That's a very good fitting there. I also like right at the back of the block here, there's a little screw which pops out and that's for timing up the block. So you can come that up, uh, take that out and see when the rear cylinder is at top dead center. And then you can time it back from there, which I believe is slightly unusual because normally you start at cylinder one at the front and work your way back rather than starting at the back and working your way forward. But that's beside the point. It has some working issues. There's a coolant leak at the front. You can see that the top of the fan's got a nice little puddle around it. And I think that's mostly just to help keep the bearing cool. One of the other additions to this car is we have a little isolator switch here, which clicks on for the power and off to stop it from draining itself. It's a sensible modification. If the head of this was painted red, that would mean it has the high compression head and that would give you an extra two horsepower. This one doesn't have that. 
God, can you imagine that? Oh, it'd be ludicrous. Getting into this is an experience. Because it's not quite designed for... Ah, there we go. The gentleman who owns this is a lot older than me, and he seems to manage it just fine. So I assume, like a Lotus Elise, there is a technique to get into it, and I am yet to master it. The interior is original, so the headlining, a bit torn, but it's how it should be. I believe this has been reupholstered when it's starting to tear, but the back is meant to be original. I love the gauges across here. We've got water, oil pressure, mileometer, and speedo, a proper speedo, fuel gauge, and the battery temperature gauge. Chokes there, and I believe that's the control. If we push that in, that will turn the heater off. Which, as I think I said earlier, wasn't a standard option. That was something that could only come after market. So, proper good. Handbrake is here, and gears are here, with the reverse being over there, first down here, third, so second, third, which is great. Other little things I really like, are, I like my rear view mirror has this nice cable tie holding it together. I also like my, I can't think how that works. Let you push it in. I like the little windscreen wiper, which will do absolutely nothing. But the best thing about this windscreen is the fact you undo these, you pull that down, we drop that down, instant ventilation. That's cool. Why do not modern cars have this, hey? It's a wonderful feature. Who cares about structural integrity and you know, rollover protection? That's what I want in my car. And on a day like this, that makes all the difference because it has been quite warm so far. The door cards, you can see where they're wearing, where the handle goes. And occasionally when you open the door, the handle doesn't reset, so you have to lift it back up to get the catch back. But we'll live over that, that's, that's fine. The only things that have been added to this are we have an auxiliary fuel pump that's down here by the steering column, which is basically used when starting the car to make sure there is a good flow of petrol. This thing just brings back, you sit in this and you feel the excitement of a vintage vehicle and you feel the kind of, the certain class and requirements and like the social status of owning a car like this. It makes you feel special. And that just makes me want to go for a drive and really sample that sensation. So let's go for a drive. This car really takes you back to the golden age of motoring. And it just, you feel special in it. I feel so very honored to be let out loose in it without the owner with me. I've just been told to drive and see what happens. And also just how old and refined and dignified it makes you feel. I feel like I am somebody to be driving this around. Oh, look at that view. Oh man, this car is just fantastic. I absolutely need this in my life, 100%. It's surprisingly quiet. It's surprisingly comfortable. I mean, I'm yeah, missing the support at the back and no headrest. Oh, thanks. Thanks, James. And amazingly responsive. The engine is really nice and runs really smoothly and produces plenty of power. Far more than I would ever give this credit for. Visibility out the front is fantastic. I like the rear view mirror, especially the cable tie holding that together. Wing mirror visibility is, it's, is abysmal, absolutely. I don't think I've ever driven anything that has such poor rear visibility. I, I can see nothing out of my sides. There's just nothing. The steering's really nice. Like, this thing is really, easy to steer and get to go where you want it to. It rolls around a bit, it is an old car, you know, it has old car, springy, soft suspension. But that's part of the charm. And I feel uber cool driving this. The only thing that would make me feel any better is if I had like a fedora and a suit and a Tommy gun. It, I want a car like this in my life. It is just super. I am just, blown away with how good it is. I was expecting this to be far less refined for a car that's this old. It's great. The most obvious thing and the most challenging thing about this car is the lack of a synchro mesh gearbox. And so I'm having to double declutch. And that's a skill I have not had to put into use for 
or coming up for 10 years, I think. Something silly like that. And that was a very, very limited run. I think I've kind of mastered shifting up. Shifting down, that's just not happening. I have not mastered shifting down by any means. So that basically means once we start moving, we're going to keep moving forevermore. All right, guys, lock your ears for a second. That was quite good. I'm, I'm actually quite happy with myself. There we go. The scenery where we are in North Carolina, as I've said in several of these videos, is just breathtaking. And being able to cruise around in a beautiful, properly old school vintage car Oh, it's magnificent. This is basically everything I've ever wanted. I didn't expect to be able to drive something like this out in America. This is kind of one of the cars I've lusted over back home of this kind of style. And being able to finally get to drive one is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's so much better than I ever thought it could be. I want to drive this car everywhere for short periods of time i mean not to drive like long distance this seat is going to get very uncomfortable very quickly already i can feel my back starting to be like Are you sure about this governor uh, yeah 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 we're fine it's it's not a particularly comfortable angle to be at also lack of indicators I love the dash. Everything bar the fuel gauge seems to be working. The fuel gauge says it's empty, but we have filled it up with some premium gas. Oh man, it's, I love the sound of this engine. It's just amazingly smooth and it feels old school because it is old school. This is so 100% my vintage. So what else can we say about it? Well, the brakes are, it has brakes. They were fitted. Do they really do anything? Um, air resistance is also quite effective at stopping us. That's basically what there is here for stopping this car. Air resistance and an attempt at brakes. They are better than, a, say, a blazer that you found in the bushes that's been there for the last hundred years. But compared to anything else I've driven, yeah, they're, um, you know, people say you stand on the brakes. This is a, a vehicle you stand on the brakes. Other things I particularly enjoy about this car. It's so good. It, worrying thing now is we're going uphill. I'm at full throttle and we're slowing down. And I'm thinking I might need to shift down. And I am not good at that. This thing rides really nicely. It's really soft, which is part of the problem. It is very soft. You can feel it slightly leading as we go around corners. And certainly it's not something you'd ever want to, I don't know, take on track. Um, would it not be hilarious to take this on track? It'd be terrible and terrifying, but it would also be um, amazing. Now, this road <laughs> is quite technical. It's the kind of thing you'd have a lot of fun in, in a modern car. This thing, especially as it's got quite hot and we are just coasting down, not as, not as fun as you might imagine. We can hear a little bit of tire squeal. Oh God. Now, what we've learned about this car is it's not the right car for climbing mountains. Surprising, I know, from the look of it, you would have thought ample vehicle to drive straight up the side of a mountain, but no, no, apparently not quite what it's kind of designed to do. Now we've come back down and we're gently under power again. The car is happy and running. Yeah, we cool down coming down there. It's lovely. So if we exclude mountain climbing from the equation, this thing is great. Unfortunately, in the terrain that we're in, there are quite a few hills. So it might not be the car that's most suited to this terrain. This along here, just the open road in America, in this car, 
this is what my dreams are made of. I mean, I'm on the wrong side of the road, which ruins it a little bit, but something is running happily, very uncharacteristic for my own vehicles, on a lovely open stretch of road. There's nobody else around. If we break down, we're probably going to die out here, but you know, this is what dreams are made of. This is just perfect. I am in love with this car. I am so in love. I don't think there's ever been a car that suited me more than this. This is, this is the car I want. Hell, I'd trade an MR2 for one of these. So guys, that's the end of my look at this absolutely stunning car. And I am so in love. More so, I think, than anything else I've ever driven. I just, I love this and I want to keep it. So please guys, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a comment. Have you driven something like this? Do you love this anywhere near as much as me? And please share it with your friends. Do they like cars like this? And so if you've enjoyed this video, please click somewhere up there for more of my American adventure. Or if you want something I've done in the UK, how about there for one of my English cars that I've seen? See you later guys.